Director Lewis. Thanks, um, uh, it's very nice to be here. And thanks for inviting um, transportation to be part of this discussion. I, I only regret that I wasn't here for the full day because I would have loved to have heard the discussion leading up to this. I would have loved to have heard um, from Grover. Um, but I think I'll, my sense is a lot of what you've heard, heard today, what you're going to hear from us, is going to be redundant. And we're going you know, to be saying the same thing. And it's a little bit like, um, duh. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, isn't this obvious? Um, well, to some it isn't obvious, and to some that they don't want to think of it, or some you know that, that um, you, you know you have an event that occurs, and oh that was too bad. And then you move on with your life, and you get on to all the other things that are causing you stress in your life, and you don't think about it. And I think we've we in public infrastructure um, take for granted that the infrastructure is there because it's always been there. Um, you know the roads were there. There last night, or there tomorrow, this morning. When you turn on your water faucet in the morning, water comes out amazingly. Flick us, how many of us think when you flick a light switch, do you ever think about what that is? How that, how that gets there? No, it's just, it's there. You know? And so most of us in the room, I'd say all of us in the room, um, were, grew up in the post interstate highway era. Who remembers? John, I hate to say that. Who remembers? <laughs> yes, who remembers? <laughs> the, 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 who remembers before I-95 was um, was there? Um, and so these these things we, we take for granted. Um, but I don't think we can take them for granted anymore, and, and it's becoming more and more apparent. So I'm going to go through. Um, I've got a little bit of a, a presentation that Peter Healy, many of you know from my office, works um, on the on our environmental effort, efforts help me put this together and just a little bit of a, a sense of what we've experienced recently, in very recent years, um, with regard to weather events um, and what the impact that's had on our infrastructure and the ripple effect that has um, on what we do. And obviously, you know, when, did the, when was this event planned, this symposium? In August. Sandy was not even a glimmer in anybody's eye. <laughs> When this when this event was planned, um, so let's let's see what Peter's put together for us. Um, the, you know, and, and I'm going to talk in a lot of generalities, but I'm going to get more specific on, on Rhode Island infrastructure. But um, the issues that we're facing that are facing the ocean state, I love to say that. You know, this is to be able to apply this issue when your state motto is the ocean state. Uh, I think you know, is the mag how many, is the magnitude of sea level rise in debate? Yeah, it's in debate. Does any do, do any does anybody in the room think it's not rising? Mm -hmm. So it's a debate about how much, how quickly, when. Um, the magnitude has an effect, but it doesn't take much to see to have to still have an impact. Um, you know, increase in hurricane intensity. You know, is the last couple of years that an anomaly, or is this the is this the new you know reality? Um, increase the number of intense precipitation events. I've only been here four years. I've seen a lot of rain. Um, <laughs> uh, increase in water temperature, the impacts of increasing water temperature was sandy, the size that it was because of increasing water temperature. Um, and, and, you know, there is the global issue, then there are regional impacts, and then there are local impacts. And, and that, it's important to to scale it down because as a, one of my colleagues from um, uh, my counterpart in Arizona, when we meet on a national level, he's like, I don't want to talk about sea level rise, but I do want to talk about the increase of dust storms and the effect that has on the interstates in Arizona um, and, the, and, and the, the impact that has on highway safety. Um, and those are becoming more frequent. Um, you know, Ken Burns just did his reminder of the Dust Bowl. I haven't been able to see yet, but I want to catch. But it's 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 those are, you know, that had a major effect on the economy of this country, and that was a, that was a you know, it was partly man-made, part climactic um, impact. I'm going to be a, a little bit of both. Um, the, I don't know who produced this chart. I didn't, but I'll, I'm going to take it at faith about it, on faith that it reflects the change in sea level um, over the last. Um, 80 years or so, and using a, um, the mean sea level um, between 83 and 2001, which is about 1990, that you've, we've gone up 
um, close to half a foot since 1990 and over and a full foot since 1930-35. So there's a, in, our, in, in some of our lifetimes, or close to our lifetimes, there's a foot of increase in sea level and um, no indication that it is doing anything other than continuing to climb. Now is that, you know, more recent spike an anomaly? We're not going to know for a few years. Um, what are the effects of all that? Um, permanent and temporary inundation of existing infrastructure. Um, permanent, you cannot sort of understand. It's, it's, you, know, you can't avoid it. But the temporary effects have, a, have an impact as well. Um, and I'm going to get into that in a little, a little bit more detail. Damage and destruction, obviously, um, you now have to respond to that. It has, it has an immediate impact because those facilities are out of service. That's got a social impact. It's got an economic impact. And then you have to do something with it. Um, drainage is clearly a challenge. And that drainage issues are the, the sort of the, the, not the sexy part of it because, oh, the bridge was washed out. We have to rebuild the bridge. But the more long term and the more problematic issue is if our drainage designs, our drainage structures, our drainage systems and highways aren't capable of handling extreme weather events, it's a lot more difficult to change out your drainage system than it is to change a bridge because it's pervasive, it's everywhere. Um, the current system is designed and built for local uh, weather and climatic conditions. And those were conditions in the past. Um, so, you know, if we are having more severe rain events, more frequent rain events, and the system's just not designed for that, then we have to think about modifying our design. Uh, and then the increased maintenance um, and the effect that those events have on, our, on, on what we do. Now let me just, uh, stole my thunder here. This, um, I'll go back onto this. This is just an area of um, down in Galilee. And what we've superimposed on this and I'll go back and do this again, is what, what the, the blue is the background, it's the mean high water mark. Um, the, the aqua color is a, a one foot sea level rise, then it goes to a three foot sea level rise, and then a one foot rise with a three foot storm surge. Then there's a five foot sea level rise, and then the orange is actually the surge height from the 38 hurricane. Um, so you, when you, let me go back to the base. So when you look at the, you know, and we're just, I'm just talking about transportation infrastructure, but this is sort of goes to what John was saying earlier about um, North Kingstown. You know, these built up areas that are, you know, vital communities, they're significant parts of our economy, um, and what happens when you go from existing mean sea level to a one foot increase to a three foot increase, I think all of which are in the realm of what most people are predicting in the foreseeable future. And then you get a surge. And what happens is you lose not only a lot of land, but you lose all the infrastructure to access the land. And then you get a chicken or egg question. If you're going to lose the community, why do you need the road? But it, it, uh, it's going to happen incrementally. And you know what does this kind of um, impact have on the built structure? And, and who is from, you're from the Jersey Shore? Originally. Originally, I'm from Basking Ridge. But, um, you know, this is, what they're, this is what they saw a month ago. And, you know, this is, a, you know, this community is gone. Um, a little bit closer to home. Um, and you can probably see more evidence of this, too. Two years ago. The floods of 2010. Um, now, you don't design and build an interstate highway system so that it goes underwater. Never in their wildest dreams, when I-95 was designed in the 1960s, did they ever anticipate this would happen. And yet, um, after a, it's a, it was a tough rainstorm. Um, it was the end of the winter. You know, there's some other conditions that came together. It was just a rainstorm, and you get the Patuxet flooding, the event that we had, and the impact it had on 995. And when you, and when you have that kind of impact on your interstate highway, everything stops. All your commerce stops down, shuts down. Um, 
and um, you know what's the solution there? Raise I ninety five. That's expensive. Um, now, more recently, um, with Sandy, um, we were we had a lot of impact here, and I think the, the public infrastructure didn't take the hit that the private infrastructure took as a result of Sandy. It's certainly not on the order of magnitude of New York and New Jersey, but it still had an impact um, in uh, on Block Island. Um, Cornette Road was lost. Spring Street was lost. The seawall in Narragansett and Ocean Road, um, Ocean Drive seawall, the, the cliff walk doesn't exist anymore in certain areas. Um, Pop, Squash, um, Pop Squash Road in uh, Bristol um, took a hit. And I've got a text coming in to Wendland to know whether that we actually can, under federal rules, raise the profile. So for the end of the discussion, hopefully, if I can, I can get the answer to that. Um, but just that. That event, we have about just from, from Sandy, and again, this was a we we dodged a bullet here just because of the path of the storm, but that um, effect um, is about 15 million dollars in public infrastructure that needs to be rebuilt, and there's a ripple effect of that too. We have a regular program that we do every year of bridge and uh, road work and our rail work. And all the other things we have programmed on a regular basis to take care of this infrastructure that's uh, rapidly depleting. Matter of fact, if we stay on the path we're on, global warming might not take care of the infrastructure, just not taking care of it. <laughs> so it might not be a problem. <laughs> but what happens when an event like this, either one of these happen, is you drop everything. Because you now have, have an emergency. And everything gets put down, and everything gets put on the shelf, and you have to go in and, and address the emergency. Well, we had. In 2010, we had the floods. In 2011, we had our meeting. In 2012, we have Sandy. What's going to be next year? So you have to start programming emergency events into your program. Um, so what do we do about it? And I think this is what we need to be thinking about. Um, this is beyond the scope of, of RIDA. We need to be at the table. We need to be part of, the, of that. Land use policies. Um, there's existing infrastructure in place there develop risk and economic impact of your strategy going forward. Um, you know, ensuring, and I think there's a lot of work being done on this, and more and more because of the focus on this, is we're getting better data. We know, we're starting to know where these impacts are going to be so we can help um, with that. Um, 2010, that, um, you know, some of the impacts of that were pretty severe. $26 million in capital costs and about, you know, months, months of um, write up virtually all hands on deck taking care of the emergencies. Everything else got put on the back shelf. Um, now, wh what do we do about that? Um, there's there's uh, the first options, the default option, keep your head in the sand and just continue on as you are. Um, there is something that needs to be talked about. Um, do some of these, do some of this facility, do we need to abandon it? Is, is it not worth, is it not, is it not worth the, uh, let's see, cost benefit ratio not there to actually restore certain things. Do we, re, do we reconstruct in place? Do we reconstruct and retrofit by raising profiles, increasing capacities? So those are the things that have to be thought of when we're going forward now. Um, increasing bridge heights. Um, do we relocate um, entirely you know, new, new infrastructure out of the port or out of harm's way? What is out of harm's way? I think a historical example of that is the, I understand the Galilee uh, escape road was done after the hurricane of 38. If you go back to that model that I showed, well, even the relocated road is underwater. So what time frame are you talking about? Um, you know, uh, I think this is what this whole discussion is about. Um, time, um, you know, looking at the data of what's coming, um, what, are we, what are the expectations, and, keep, and, and putting that into our transportation planning um, so that um, we can begin to take steps and, not keep having the same things happen over and over again. But it's not an easy task. Just an example of one, one thing that we're doing on that thing. Central Bridge in Barrington um, is going to be reconstructed um, next year. And we've changed the profile working with the community. We've rolled, uh, raised the profile by two and a half feet um, to allow for um, future sea level rise and not have a brand new facility that should have a 75 year life um, be impacted by that. Um, on 138, um, just um, uh, down the road, 
where in the design we're taking into account additional intensive rain events. So we're designing the drainage systems to accommodate that um, expected um, increased um, uh, rain events in the future and to not have the same kind of runoff um, that historically we've had. And we work very closely with DEM and others to make sure that these, these designs are in place. So um, I, I feel the shepherd's hook coming up. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to end it there. Um, but I just want to be, uh, we're, we're glad to be at the table working with folks um, to um, implement um, in our designs, in our planning, um, some of the issues that are facing us and not having our heads in the sand and playing ostrich. So with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, and I can't go away yeah. without some positives. Um, you know, maybe there are some benefits to this. Um, um, the snow budget's tough, and uh, you know, if we, if, if we uh, through global warming, we don't have to plow the snow anymore. That's not a bad thing, and uh, maybe we will become truly the ocean state if we can <laughs> increase our Any navigation. Questions?